I can hear his voice. Let me see. Excuse me. Please. Excuse me. We have a very sick man here. He needs to see Jesus. So does everyone else. Wait your turn. Don't be like those who appear to be clean and righteous on the outside, but inwardly are filled with filth and sin. Forgive me, Jesus, but I had no choice. I don't believe these people. You have great faith. No. Be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven. This man speaks blasphemy. No one except God can forgive sins. Why do my words surprise you? I... Uh, I... What is more difficult for me to say your sins are forgiven, or for me to say, Arise, take up your bed and walk. Well, well I, uh, to heal is more difficult. Very well. To show you then that I have power to forgive sins. Arise, take up your bed and walk. <gasps> he's healed. Look, look, he's standing. It's a miracle. I am forgiven. That means more to me than life itself. What did I tell you? This Jesus seems like a holy man, and yet he agrees to eat in the home of a publican. He wouldn't really do it. He wouldn't dare. Does this surprise you? I tell you, the time is near when all that are in the graves shall come forth. <laughs> you there! How is it that your master, your rabbi, eats with sinners and publicans if he's so holy? Come up, please, and ask him yourself. Don't do it. It's like he knows what you're thinking. He's very smart. I'm not afraid of him. You have asked a very important question. And I'm waiting for your answer. A doctor does not visit the homes of those who are healthy. He goes to the homes of the sick. What's that supposed to mean? I have come to help sinners repent. But I cannot do this if I spend my time with the righteous. Oh, <clears throat> told you. Behold, there was a woman who had ten pieces of silver. But then one day, she discovered she had lost one. Oh.
she found it and called her friends and neighbors together and greatly rejoiced. So it is among the angels of God when just one sinner repents. When Matthew told me about the things you teach, I, I didn't believe it. And, and even now, it seems... Uh... Are you saying, Master, that even we publicans are precious to God? How can that be? There once was a shepherd boy who had 100 sheep. But one day, he noticed one of them was missing. So he left the 99 in search of the one. Now to block the way The lonely and the blind For there is joy In the presence of the angels Now that the wandering land That's lost is He returned home and called to his friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which is lost. Again I say to you, there is more joy in heaven over the one sinner who repents than for the ninety-nine who need no repentance. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. In times past you have heard, Thou shalt not kill. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without cause shall be in danger of judgment. In times past you have heard, an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But I say, if someone smites you on your right cheek, offer him the other. In times past you have heard, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Pray for those who mistreat you and despitefully use you. You must do more than simply believe these things. You must do these things. Whoever hears these words of mine and does them, him I will compare to a wise man who built his house upon a rock. Digging the foundation for my house. 
Up here? The soil sits on a huge rock. It'll take you forever to dig here. Yes. But just think how strong the house will be when I'm done. <laughs> just think of all the time you'll have wasted. We'll make do somehow. <laughs> Suit yourself. I'm building over here. But that soil is too sandy. You can't build on that. It isn't safe. Pish posh. I'll build on it all right. And I'll be done in half the time it takes you. season <laughs> pay no attention boys we're doing the right thing The river can't hurt the rock beneath us. Stop your whining. Not a single drop has come through. It's not the roof I'm worried about. Behold, he who hears my words and does them not is like the foolish man who built his house without a foundation, and great was the fall thereon. You see? His words are very powerful. Love, patience, forgiveness. Build your life upon those ideas and all will be well. It's worth a try. If you're called upon to testify about me, don't worry about what you shall say. The Holy Ghost shall tell you what to say in that very hour. Master, please, would you speak with my brother and convince him to divide our inheritance? Who am I to judge the division of your inheritance? I... 
Beware of greed and envy, for the value of a man's life has little to do with the things he owns. There once was a certain rich man, and his land produced so great a harvest, he said to himself, What shall I do? I have no room for all this fruit. But so much did he love his possessions that he tore down all his barns and built larger ones. Then he said to himself, Now I have enough to last for years. Now I can eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, for tonight your life on earth is finished, and the things you've gained on earth are worth nothing to your soul. So it is with those who seek only the treasures of the earth, but are poor in the things of God. What was he trying to say with that parable? What's it supposed to mean? I think he explained that. Yes, I know. The rich man loved treasures of the earth more than the things of God. But why did he tell me that story? Because I want my inheritance? Is that wrong? Beware of greed, he said. But that's not greed. It's justice. My inheritance has been stolen from me. That's what's wrong. And I'll never rest until I get it back. It's what I'll live for until my dying day. Just like the rich man. I'm just like the rich man. My life is built on, on getting earthly things. It's built on... A foundation of sand. Yes. I'm a foolish man, too. I've been so foolish. You knew this would happen, didn't you? How? Because it happened to me the same way. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. say about him. His very presence is so powerful. How? I... I know you. You can't come in here. Jesus. Are you... as holy as they say, he would know that this woman is a sinner and he would rebuke her. Simon, I have something to say to you. There once was a certain lender who had two debtors. One owed him 500 coins, 
and the other only owed him fifty. Go on. Neither of them could pay their debt, so the lender forgave them both. Tell me, which debtor would love him most? Well, I imagine the one whom he forgave the most. That is right. Do you see this woman? When I came into your house, you gave me no water for my feet. But she washed my feet with her tears and dried them with her hair. You greeted me without a kiss, but this woman has not ceased to kiss my feet. You didn't anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet. Wherefore I say to you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. <laughs> Thank you.